chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled, who among them can declare this, and shew us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear, and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior, and beside me there is no Savior, no Savior, no Savior. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Black folk in America in a world of trouble. You in a world of trouble in this country and in the world. And contrary to what you hear, I don't care whether it comes out of a black mouth or a white mouth, anybody that tells you that black folk are progressing in America is lying to you. You're lying to you. And right now, if we don't do some very specific things in America and in Baltimore in the next three years, not 200 years from now, but in the next three years, you are through in America. You're through. You're going to become a permanent underclass in three years. And an underclass means those individuals who by the nature of their circumstances are will be forced to live as either beggars or criminals. Oh, black people, get up out of the slop trough and look. What do you think these floods are? What do you think the winds are? What do you think the unusual rain, the unusual snow, the violent storms, the hail storms, the pestilence is coming, it's here. Famine is on the way. And Mickey D won't be able to give you a burger. The Bible says... And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, Ye are gods. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf, as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law, and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith, receive. 
store. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger, and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. The ancient Christians and Jews of Rome insisted on burial of their dead. Wealthy citizens had lined the roads just outside the city with family tombs. These tombs were called catacombas, which is Greek for at the hollows. The name came from the natural hollow spaces that lined the Via Appia, one of the ancient roads that led to and from Rome. Into these hollow spaces, the first Christian cemetery was built above ground. It is from these early catacombas that the catacombs of Rome evolved. More clues about these early practices come from nearby paintings. The paintings in the catacombs give us some of our best clues to what early Christian practice really was. And you have pictures of mixed groups of people sitting around tables, drinking wine, and eating bread. And this was a very touchingly simple kind of a ceremony. The early Christians freely adopted Greek and Roman symbols and mythology for inspiration in the catacombs. Many walls depict Hercules, the great mythological hero who was famous for his courage and strength. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Have you ever seen the little fish on the back of cars? I'm sure you have. It's obviously the Christian symbol. But why a fish? Well, in the early days, Christianity was illegal. In fact, it was being persecuted. You didn't want people to know you were a Christian unless they were a Christian too. So when two people met, if there was a sense they were Christians, one would take their finger or a stick and make a line in the sand. If the other were a Christian, they would then complete it and go the other way. And before them would be the sign of the fish. But why did they choose that sign? Well, if you think about it, the very first disciples Jesus ever called were fishermen. If you think about it, the feeding of the 5,000 was loaves and fishes. If you think about it, when the resurrection came and Christ appeared to the disciples again, he went to the fishermen, he sat down, and he ate with them. The fish was always a sign of life. It was a sign of call. It was a sign of sustenance. It was a sign of hope and life. That's the Christian sign, the sign of the fish. <laughs> church say amen i hope everybody is still doing well on this beautiful blessed day that the lord has made as you can see the title up there christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us and to all of you that has been keeping up with me uh great shout out to you you notice i did a you know quite a few videos about the law because you have to really go into detail about the law and break down a lot of things about the law and then you know you're going to have a lot of debate off top but I leave the debating for the debaters I just you know tell the truth and get out of the way so I want to come back and pause in this video 
and and give a shout out to my girl um grace truth teacher also y'all check my sister out she has some dynamic videos up she's speaking the word of god so check out grace truth teacher she is putting up some powerful videos and men me and uh, my sister Grace, we talk about kind of kind of the same things in so many ways. And uh, this is why I want to go back now to this for a moment. And I will be, you know, probably posting about three more videos about the law. And then I'll be done with it, you know, because of the rest of the videos that we have. And when Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, that's why I said in the previous video that everybody wasn't a Jew. And when you wasn't a Jew, you was considered as a Gentile. And Gentile, once again means nations. Huh? Chapter 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Raphath, and Togama. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kitim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentile, 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 Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nations. And you have so many people don't want to teach. They, they, they want to tell one side, but don't tell the other. This is why I say I can't teach Ten Commandments, then don't teach grace and mercy. And then you got a lot of people just want to teach the commandment, or you're not keeping the commandment, you're going to hell this, you're going to hell that, you know, so on and so on. And the law, when you look at it like this, as opposed to the blessing, which is grace, y'all know I like to say grace is God, riches under Christ's expense. The law is a curse upon all mankind, none of whom can possibly fulfill it. it could nobody keep that law but Christ. Huh? If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou return unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off, far off, far off, far off, far off, far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. And the law itself is perfect and holy. Those who try to justify themselves before it bring not his blessing, but bring a curse upon themselves. Huh? So the Bible itself it tells us what the curse of the law is. And all who rely on observing the law are under a curse, for it is written, Curse is who? Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. You can see that the guy had erred twice. First of all, he said that the, uh, the, the Gentiles means nation, right? That's one error which we, which we had to uh, intercept and, and show you the truth. Now, second error now he tried to say that the law was too hard and I had to distinctively put the new NIV 
version in there so you can see that it's not too difficult to do the laws of God. You know what I'm saying? And it's because of the people not obeying the laws of God that God had to remove them out of the land. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a promise. It was a it was a promise that was made between the Israelites and God about these laws. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings, and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said will we do, and be obedient. So these laws is really serious, and if you didn't obey these laws, the curses would come upon you, and the curses have come upon Israel, you know what I mean? And right now, to this very day, they are scattered across the face of the earth. In every country, in every continent, there's Israelites, you know what I'm saying? And they are hidden, you know what I mean? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says they are hidden. Psalm 83, a song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Thy hidden ones, hidden ones, hidden ones, hidden ones, hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Meaning they don't even know who they are, you know what I mean? And that's crazy, you know what I mean? I'm sorry for saying you know what I mean all the time, that's just the way that I talk, you know? But yeah, so we're gonna keep on listening to what this guy is talking about and we're gonna um, unravel all the uh, false doctrine which permeates out of his mouth. It's permeate a word, I think I heard that before. I was trying to use a new dialect, use different vocabulary words, but uh, you, you so clearly no one is justified before God by the law because the righteous will live by what? Faith. My sister Grace True teacher just, just said in her video, the law does not save you. Chapter 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. When thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord shewed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. And I always tell people, no one was able to, the Jews, look at, look at how many Jews actually could keep all of the law. You feel what I'm saying now? And the Bible say the law is, is not based on faith, but on the contrary, the, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. I mean, curse is everyone who's hung on a tree. Go to your book of Galatians. Go to the book of Galatians if you you know you think I'm lying about this. And what we gotta understand is from the passage is that the curse is not the law. The curse is the penalty. Hmm. See, when you couldn't keep the law, the book of the law refers to the covenant laws for God God had with his people Israel in the time of Moses, in Moses' time. And 
And the law can point out where we fail, where we fall short of God's will. But it cannot pronounce us righteousness. That was not the purpose. See, Paul, let me go back to Paul for a minute. In Galatians, Paul is telling, telling us that everyone who does not keep the law perfectly is cursed by it. Go back to Deuteronomy. The reason is because no one can obey the law perfect. In fact, it was probably over, let's say, it was probably over 600 laws. If you really do the deep studying, it was probably over 600 laws the Jews had to keep to be right in the eyes of God. And they couldn't even break one of them. If they broke one, they was under condemnation. Trying to achieve salvation through obedience to the law. Well, for example, look at this. Back then, look at how strong, look how powerful Look at the, the rules that God laid out. Just let's take adultery for a moment once again. You, can, you committed adultery, you can be stoned to death. Yes. You killed, you was killed. I mean, when you go back to the Old Testament, this is why a lot of people don't like to read the Old Testament. Because if you broke one commandment, you was in deep trouble. I always tell people, think about Adam for a moment and Eve. How many sins did Adam had to commit? How many sins, sins did, excuse me, Eve had to commit? It didn't take but one to lose favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now think about our life once again. How many sins have we committed just on one hand? See, we would be, we would be dead. We wouldn't have grace and mercy. We would get what we deserved, but not getting what you deserve. I did a whole video explaining the difference between grace and mercy. And a lot of people skip over that. So, man, as a result, all who try to live by the old law were under a divine curse. But here's the good news is that Jesus Christ redeemed us once again from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. That's another reason why when he got on the cross, he said it was finished. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Yes, he did. When he bore the total burn of God's curses, Paul explained how in his letter to the Romans, I believe he was talking to the Romans, God gave us Jesus as a sacrifice through the faith, through his blood. Look at what they did to our Savior. Hmm. And Christ, he did that to, de to demonstrate his justice because hmm, when you think about what we should get for what we have done, it's a blessing to be walking around her right now. It's a blessing to be sitting in this camera right now, telling somebody about the goodness of God, telling somebody that God can save you. He fulfilled it. He fulfilled every bit of the law. The curse of the law fell on Christ on our behalf so that the righteous of God could fall on us, even though we did not deserve it. So with that being said, God bless you. And God keep you. Hope everybody's having a beautiful and a blessed day. And remember once again, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. So I hope this can make sense to everybody. And I will be coming back probably doing about three more because I want to talk about the difference between the laws, the ceremony law, the mosaic law, or mosaic law, however you want to pronounce it, Christ's law, fulfilling the law. And I'll be done. And I'm just going to tell the truth and get out of the way. And like in this video, I told the truth, and I'm going to get on out of the way. Peace. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They say the law of God is hard, but it's not. And I showed you the scripture where it said it wasn't hard. And then they said it's, it can't be done. And there's been many a people that did the laws of God. Samuel was a man of God. He did all the laws of God. He, you know what I mean? Isaiah, what about him? You know what I mean? What about Jeremiah? Ezekiel, you know what I mean? And he said, Samuel, I mean, I already said Samuel. You know what I mean? It was a lot of people that did the work of God. It's, the laws are still in effect till to this day. You know what I mean? And we need to take heed of this. And this is why the curse has fallen upon the Israelites. And now they are scattered across the earth. And, you know, they got to wait 
for God to regather them and put them back into the line. That's the promise that we're waiting for. And God is going to set up his kingdom on earth. You know what I mean? And his kingdom has laws. And it's the same laws that he gave to Moses. That's where he's going to magnify the law. So don't let people deceive you and be talking a whole bunch of nonsense. I mean, it's ignorance. You know what I mean? It's ignorance because he doesn't know. He's been listening to the precepts of men. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, 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 changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The New Testament was written to justify the Grecians, so that's why they have put into context the New Testament to justify their way, you know what I mean, and um, their doctrine. But the New Testament isn't isn't really like the words of God. It's, it's the words of men, you know. You know, in the New Testament, you don't have, thus says the Lord. So anybody that's quoting from the New Testament is really quoting the precepts of men, you know. The Old Testament was already finished and done with. All the prophecies is in the Old Testament, you know. So anybody that's preaching from the New Testament to the Old is, is an error. Chapter 12 And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Shut up the words and seal the book, 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 even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. The people of God is the Israelites, you know. They are the ones that were given the, the, the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments of God. Chapter 4 Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? You know, we got heathens teaching us the word of God or, or, or uh, trying to interpret scripture, and they can't interpret scripture. 
You want to know why? Because it was for Israel to interpret scripture. You know? And the whole thing is, is that right now, Israelites are scattered. And right now they're on the bottom. And all the curses that was pronounced in the Old Testament and Deuteronomy and all these stuff that have come upon the Israelites right now. You know what I'm saying? And I prayed unto the Lord God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. But unto us confusion of faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his ways which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him, and he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that hast brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and hast gotten thee renowned, as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. So a lot of African Americans and a lot of Africans and stuff like that who are suffering right now, you know, do you know in the Sudan right now, they are still enslaving them, you know what I'm saying? And these people are enslaved, you know, whereas though it's still like 1863 to them in Sudan, Sudan, you know what I mean? And it's 2012, but slavery is still going on. That's because all the curses that was pronounced upon them in the Old Testament is still going on right now, you know what I mean? I'm here to let you know that my name is Bol Gaideng, and I'm from, actually, Baramai from the Sudan, from the southern part. Uh, region. I represent my South Sudanese as well. Uh, combined what Sudan really means as a continent uh, and a country and Sudan is the largest country in Africa and later on you guys can learn a lot about the history of the country how that actually meant the African people in the world. Uh, as the motherland of Africa, civilization is studied Sudan as well and I will not uh, go to that detail. I will leave that to my uh, fellow friend, our uh, brother, uh, my older brother, Khalid, to explain that. But I will just a little bit share with you my own life, how actually someone like me was a slave in the 21st century. And but you guys think in America that, well, a slave is not, is not exist. Uh, well, uh, actually, I was a slave. And I was a runaway slave, by the way. But thank God I'm here. Yeah, thank God I'm here. And uh, actually, in 19, uh, war been going on in Sudan for a long time. So, and as you guys know, Sudan problem is the all this uh, complex have been in the in the continent in, in the in the world, and it still exists today. Uh, actually, uh, bear in mind of the war and uh, with the without detail, uh, my village was attacked in 1987 when I was actually kidnapped with almost about 700 kids with us, and the Arab militant actually come and attack our village. I was a young man that in my village actually bear in mind, did not know about America would exist. I had never heard about the United States. I had never heard about China. Never heard about anything in the world. But I thought actually, we the Dinka actually was existing in the world. Because I'm a Dinka man. Uh, so I thought that my own spot that I was living in before the Arab came and invaded our land, I thought that we were the only people existing in the land because we speak one dialect only. So most of us didn't have a chance to go to school and there's not a school available in our lifetime. So we always, you know, a good caution man. We also uh, go and, and uh, own the cows, actually, part of our lives. So the Arab militants come and attack us uh, in 1987 in the morning around 6 a.m. 
that actually uh, took me to the slavery. And most of them are family. Uh, some of them they lost and they killed uh, my neighbors. And actually very much, I lost my dad at the time as well. My mom was beating in front of me until she actually uh, lost conscious, uh, actually very much at the time. And she became paralyzed when actually I was taken. So I was taken uh, to the slavery. We walk about uh, three days, uh, I could say about 500 miles from the south to the north. And it was harsh. It was very abusive. And actually, the slave that took place at the time I was a slave was actually, it was, I think it was 20 attempts, because there were 20 attacks by the Marahalin. We call the Marahalin in our language, but they used to very much the Arabs. And actually, at that time, I was taken with these young guys, and most of us actually survived a time for more than 20 attacks. And then the last one, I did not make it. I was actually kidnapped. And actually doing the journey, the experience I experienced in the journey times is that there was, we were walking and the, uh, these Arab uh, guys that were so abusive toward the young kids who are seven years old and five years old at the times. And actually, one thing that was shocking to me was that there was a young boy that in the journey with us was not able to walk. Uh, and he was crying, looking for his mother and dad, calling his mother name and dad names. And the master took uh, something called safe, which is actually is a big knife, actually, and actually cut his head off. And actually, and he showed to the, and he gathered us and said, this is the lesson for you. Anybody cry, or anybody do anything, you will be next. So, and he took the head of this young boy, another boy, and gave it to another boy to carry it on in the journey with us. The journey was so painful with us. And it was so, and most kids, they were so shocked. And this young boy was carrying the end of the young boy for more than three days in the journeys. And the young boy was saying that, uh, why should I carry the head of my fellow friends? And he said that these fellow friends, and he said something in Dinka that we, in our, our culture, when somebody dies, it should be bad. Why do I need to carry the head of my fellow friends? And he said that, it's you to be disciplined to know that if you drop this head, you will be the next. The young man have carrying this for almost three days. We were sharp in the journey. And actually, at the time, we went to the, uh, uh, to the, dis uh, to the destination. And this thing actually was uh, smiling so bad to the point where this young man doesn't know what to do. And, and actually, uh, when we got there, we were separated. Everybody have his own way to go. We divided to the masters. I was with another master, another person, and we didn't see each other. These young men disappeared. Some of them died uh, at the times. And actually, for me personally, when I was taken to another master, actually I was very much uh, shocked with the situation that I was in the journey that I saw. So I need to behave in another way to make sure that I'm not going to go through this, as that what, what I witnessed in my, with my friends. And actually. At the time, I was abused, given religion called Islam. I tried to read the books, I deny and give me a different name. My name actually, in the, during my slave uh, time, I was, my name was Yagub, and they took away my name. I'm no longer a bold guy, as my love Chan calling me now. I'm glad I got my identity back. And actually, very much uh, at the time, I was given a job to do. I used to go and give the cuddles and, and cars water when I was become someone that can be trusted to God by myself. And because I did that, because I need to save my life, not to be killed. So I got to do and give them a uh, job, uh, do the job for them. At the time that I was able to become normal in the community, in that community, and actually was most desperate time that I have with them is that I didn't have food to eat. Sometimes I have no bed to eat, to, to sleep in. Sleep with some goats sometimes, some uh, dogs. Dogs in America can give them bed by dog in Africa. They just, um, they have no place. And here in American dog have to obey that they can sleep. So it's so hard to the point I cannot find your foods. When I become so desperate and the religion that was given me, I did not read alphabet. Because the more you read something is when you know the alphabet. When you give a blanket, something is so white, like a paper, you don't see it because you cannot read it. But it was told you need to memorize it. It was hard as a young boy. And I need to actually, at the time I was uh, desperate, uh, I decided to skip. And I said, you know what? I would die running than dying sitting. 
And I, something told me that you need to run away from here. And actually, and thank God with a train coming from Western Darfur was going to Khartoum town. For some reason, I had never seen a train. Something is so long. I just make a noise. I don't know what them really, I didn't know back then what it meant. But for some reason, something told me that you need to sneak in and just hide. And with a business train, I said, you know what? I got to do this. I left the cars and everything and just ran away, ran off, took off, sneak in, and the train just took off right away. And that, I realized, was actually was my, uh, it was something that was able to rescue me and save me at the time. And then it took three days. And the journey, you know, was a journey that I took as a young boy, 12 years old at the time. Uh, didn't have food to eat. I have no mom. My mom didn't know her life, whether it was die, chill. I did have no clue about it, but I know my dad was shot in, in front of me. I know my uncle actually was shot by uh, by an Arab man that actually was pretend to be a, to be a businessman and come and kill my my my, my uncle. Now you have to, and, and why did I put on that scripture Isaiah 42? Because we are blind and we do not see. You know what I'm saying? Who is the servant of God? That's the Israelite. Israel, my servant. He said that many times in Isaiah. You know what I mean? But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Chapter 44. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Remember these, O Jacob, and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee, thou art my servant. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. I mean, so therefore, we are the blind ones, his servants, you know, and at the same time, we are the people that has gone through all the curses and the things that have befallen upon the black people as far as we call ourselves black, even though that's just a byword, you know what I mean? Just like the word nigga is a byword, you know what I mean? Thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. I mean, curse is everyone who's hung on a tree. Go to your book of Galatians. Go to the book of Galatians if you, you know you think I'm lying about this. I did a whole video explaining the difference between grace and mercy. And a lot of people skip over that. So, man, as a result, all who try to live by the old law were under a divine curse. But here's the good news is that Jesus Christ redeemed us once again from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. That's another reason why when he got on the cross, he said it was finished. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Yes, he did. When he bore the total burn of God's curses, Paul explained how in his letter to the Romans, I believe he was talking to the Romans, God gave us Jesus as a sacrifice through the faith, through his blood. Look at what they did to our Savior. Hmm. And Christ, he did that to, de to demonstrate his justice because hmm, when you think about what we should get for what we have done, it's a blessing to be walking around here right now. It's a blessing to be sitting in this camera right now. Telling somebody about the goodness of God. Telling somebody that God can save you. He Alright. His whole doctrine is error for the simple fact is that, that he's preaching the message of Apostle Paul. Now if you know anything about Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul came preaching to the Gentiles, to the heathens, you know what I'm saying? Because the heathens and the Gentiles didn't know scripture. So he was able to convince them or to confound them or to convince them that they are or they can be saved by, by, by Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Because the Gentiles didn't know anything about scripture or anything about, you know, God of Israel. Chapter 10. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. 
for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee doth it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee." But they are altogether brutish and foolish, 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 brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Uphaz, the work of the workmen, and of the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their clothing, they are all the work of cunning men. But the Lord is the true God, he is the living God, and an everlasting king. At his wrath the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. You know what I mean? Because the Romans and the people in Ephesus and Galatia, you know what I mean? They, they worship idols and pagan gods and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that's how Apostle Paul was able to gain you know, the, the, the Grecians or the heathens, you know what I mean, or the Gentiles, was because they didn't know scripture. But as you know, if you know, you know, New Testament, Apostle Paul wasn't able to convince the Jews or the Israelites anything that he was talking about. Matter of fact, they never believed anything that he was preaching. And that was because they knew scripture, you know. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee, We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, 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 save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple, to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. But now since Israel, like I said in the past, is scattered across the earth, you know what I mean? Nobody is there to stand in the place to, to teach the people, you know, the true, true, you know, doctrine of God. You know what I mean? So now we have a bunch of people claiming to be Christians, you know, and preaching the doctrine of Apostle Paul. You know what I mean? And Apostle Paul was out of, was in error totally, you know what I mean? Even all the Jews, you know, during the time were telling him that he was wrong. You know what I mean? But he didn't want to listen. Chapter 26 Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. And Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straitest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee, 
And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but shewed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple, and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should shew light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came shewed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that Paul had spoken one word, Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Instead, he just said, okay, if you get you Jews, I'm going to go to the Gentiles and teach them, you know what I mean? Which is total error. So anybody that starts preaching to you about, from Galatians, you know what I mean? Any message that start from Galatians, or start from Romans, or start from the Gospels, you know what I mean, or start from Acts, or, you know what I mean, is not, is not the truth, for real. You can never go from the New Testament to the Old. It's always from the Old to the New, you know what I mean? It's left to right. It's not right to left, you know what I mean? And when you do that, that's how you get caught up in a whole bunch of error. So now everything this guy is preaching is from the New Testament to the Old Testament. 
You know what I mean? When the Old Testament came before the New Testament. Now, if you know Old Testament scriptures, God is not man at all. You know what I mean? There's no reason for him to become man. You know what I mean? He's God Almighty. He can kill and make alive. You know what I mean? He can do whatever he would like to do as he wants to. He do what he pleases. You know? So for people to sit down here and tell you that God changed and he doesn't change, you know what I mean? That's an error on itself. You know? And for anybody to try to deceive you and to tell you that man can save you, man cannot save you. There's no savior but Jehovah, and that's God, and that's God alone. You know what I mean? He's God above all gods. You know what I mean? So if Jesus is a God, Jehovah is over Jesus. You know what I mean? If the Holy Spirit is a God, Jehovah is over the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? He's the only God. You know. Way you try and get away from these laws and trying to say, yo, it's, it's, it's irrelevant now. Jesus died on the cross and was made a curse. Jesus cannot save you. You know what I mean? He cannot. It's already written in the Bible. It's written in the Old Testament. Jesus cannot save you. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is no Savior beside 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 me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion. As a leopard by the way will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and will rend the call of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. 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 I will be thy king, where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities, and thy judges of whom thou saidst, Give me a king and princes. I gave thee a king in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. So remember that, you know, Jesus is a man. No way you won't put man before God. No way. It's, that's, it's not possible. You know? Man is not God. We don't even perceive the same mind of God. We don't even know the thoughts of God if he didn't reveal it. You know what I mean? Everything that Jesus know, God put it into his heart and put it into his mind. You know? Now you got people telling you that um want to override Isaiah with John. It don't go like that. You know what I'm saying? You cannot find John in the Old Testament. John is not speaking according to, to the will of God. He's speaking according to his own heart, according to his own thoughts and his, to his own desires and stuff like that. You know what I mean? There's no way that Jesus would have told you that he was equal to God. There's no way. He's an Israelite. You know, and that was a no no. There's only one God. And then that's all. And you and, and you can read scriptures and Jesus will tell you that. Alright? So before you let people just talk messages in their heart and they don't even have any education as far as scripture goes, you know what I mean? They take New Testament as scripture. I said before, New Testament is not scripture. You know what I mean? New Testament is the precepts of men. Scripture is always was the Old Testament. Whenever the New Testament teachers wanted to talk about Scripture, they were referring to the Old Testament. They were referring to Isaiah. They were referring to Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea. You know what I'm saying? They didn't. They, re, they didn't refer to to Matthew. They didn't refer themselves to Romans. You know what I mean? Because it, 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 during the days of Paul, they weren't written during that time. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was written after Paul died. You know what I'm saying? Romans was written by Paul. The Thessalonians was written, written by Paul. Galatians was written by Paul. You know what I'm saying? Paul came after Christ. You know what I mean? So you can't, you can't, can't get any messages from them because they're not speaking upon. They're not talking about. You know what I'm saying? Biblical verses, scripture of the Old Testament. You know, and when you read Psalms and you read the Psalms of As Asaph, you know what I mean? When you read that, you really realize what what prophecy really is. You know, I mean? prophecy is only in the Old Testament. There's no New Testament prophecy, you know? 
they don't prophesy in the New Testament because they can't prophesy in the New Testament. The reason why they can't prophesy in the New Testament because it wasn't given to them. It was the Levites that prophesied. You know what I mean? It's, it's an order in everything that way everything goes. So they can't prophesy in the New Testament because the New Testament came to you by Grecians. It was written in Greek by Greek speaking people. You know what I mean? And if you know anything about the Greek people, they believe in mythology. You know what I mean? That's why you walking around thinking that hell is the same description of Hades. It's not. You know what I mean? Hell is what you go through. David said, you will not leave my soul in hell. You know what I mean? My soul it was in hell because I was going through all that nonsense. I mean, not me, but I'm just saying as far as David. David was going through all the stuff that he was going with was through Saul. You know what I mean? And then when he finally found rest and was made king of Israel, what did he do? He said, man, I'm going to build God a house because it's not right for me to be in a house. And, and the ark could come in and God dwells in the tent. I'm going to build God a house for making me as peaceful and, and, and um, living up to his promises. You know what I mean? Because God is a covenant keeping God. And he made a covenant with Israel. You know what I mean? And, 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 and in, the, in the days of Moses, he made this covenant. You know? So everything in the Old Testament was already complete. It was no reason for no New Testament to even be written. That was the New Testament was written because the Grecians didn't want to follow the, the, the laws of God. You know what I mean? They wanted to claim the blessings, but they didn't want to follow the laws of God. You know what I mean? And there's nothing that Jesus Christ could have did for you because it's already it was written in the Bible that no one can save you from nothing. You know what I mean? If Job is all right, the scripture is in. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land, and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beasts, though these three men were in it as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, they only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon that land, and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land, and pour out my fury upon it in blood, to cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, How much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast? Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you, when ye see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. If Job was there, Daniel, or whatever, it was in the land, they cannot save nobody but themselves, you know what I mean? And that's what was written. So, let's, 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 let's become more educated and read, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. You know what I mean? Now that's a New Testament scripture. But that's true. You seek God first. You know what I mean? 